Every Tuesday, a busload of newly sentenced inmates from New Orleans and neighboring Jefferson Parish arrives at this state prison. This is their entry point into the sprawling Louisiana prison system. Gerald Thomas! Craig LeBlanc! They're here in Cottonport only briefly for screening and orientation. We're gonna have our nurse practitioner come over here and look at you, all right? You take any medicines? You don't need any kind of medicine. And you said 10th grade was the highest grade you went to. Did you take any special education classes? Many of those arriving lack education or come in with long histories of addiction. If you're a drug addict, you're not going to keep your job. You're going to lose your job, okay? So once you lose your job, there's really only two ways to get drugs. That steal for it or sell it to make the drug free. Doesn't mean I'm a big drug dealer that's riding around a fancy car and doing with money in my pocket because I didn't. I was homeless. I had no car. I had nothing. 44-year-old Craig LeBlanc is back in the prison system for the third time in five years. He's hoping to be placed in a facility that offers drug rehab and educational programs. But odds are high that he'll do his time in a local jail. For decades, Louisiana has incarcerated more people per capita than anywhere else on Earth. In the 1990s, the state's prisons were so full that a federal court ordered the Department of Corrections to reduce overcrowding. So they encouraged local sheriffs to convert their jails to prisons that could hold inmates for the state with a promise of future profits. And so you had this growth industry of these new prisons popping up across the state. But the prisons weren't state-run. They would be a local parish. And that local parish may have before had a jail that was relatively small, but now was really incentivized to invest in a larger prison and to be a subcontractor for a price to the state of Louisiana. The arrangement has brought jobs and an influx of cash to some struggling rural communities. So when businesses start to close and when the economic opportunities in a very rural parish start to diminish, in so many locations, the parish prison became the space to continue economic generation. And that creates an incredibly perverse incentive for incarceration. Today, more than half the people convicted of crimes in Louisiana are held in parish prisons. The state pays local sheriffs $25 a day for each person they incarcerate. That means that the sheriffs are incentivized to, A, house as many people as they can to increase the revenue, and B, uh, provide the minimum level of services that they need to, to increase the profit. So it means that because the sheriffs kind of benefit from the Department of Corrections payment, the conditions in those parish jails have traditionally been really terrible. What religion are you? I'm a Christian. Michael Sosa Santi Esteban is about two years into a 12-year prison sentence for burglary. He's already bounced between eight different parishes. If you're lucky, you go to a parish jail, which is calm, where there's zero tolerance, where there's, you know, zero violating, you know, there's uh, uh, zero violence. Um, but if you're unlucky, you go to a place where you get no rest, you get no sleep, and your expected level of security is non-existent. A sentence that you spend in a local jail or prison is a sentence that probably comes with very little programming. It comes with very little opportunity to take courses on anger management or to get your GED. It means that the odds are high that you will not get routine medical care. Um, it, the odds are high that you won't get appropriate dental care. If you have a mental illness, the odds are very high that there will be no one there who will talk to you about your mental illness, treat your mental illness, or um, provide whatever you were being provided on the outside. The man in charge of running Louisiana's prison system says $25 a day is simply not enough to provide anything beyond the bare minimum. At $25 a day, you basically can, I call it lock and feed. Lock and feed is basically they have the funding to be able to clothe them, 
be able to provide food for them, be able to, to house them, and provide security. When somebody comes into our system, they're in a grade level of somewhere around the seventh grade. That, that's the average grade level when we get them. So obviously, they have failed in our education system. They have, they, and so then we get them, and we expect it to create miracles, and we're certainly not going to do it at $25 a day. For the past two years, LeBlanc has been spearheading an overhaul of the criminal justice system. The prison population has dropped 11 percent, saving the state about $30 million. Now LeBlanc is reinvesting a portion of the savings in programs designed to keep people from returning to prison. We can't expect people to come to prison and be dropped back off on the corners and, and, and expect them to succeed. It's just, it's not going to happen. And we've, we're changing that. And that, that is a big part of our reform efforts. At the southernmost tip of Louisiana, in Plaquemines Parish, the Department of Corrections is piloting a new re-entry program. On the east bank of the Mississippi River, rising from the marshland, is the Plaquemines Parish Detention Center. The 800-bed jail was built with FEMA dollars after Hurricane Katrina destroyed the old lockup. For years, it stood vacant, and the sheriff at the time ended up in federal prison for taking kickbacks from one of the contractors who built it. By the time Jerry Turlick became sheriff in 2016, the jail he inherited was deeply in debt, losing almost $5 million a year. They had no inmates, they had no anything, so I think, uh, that was priority one when I when I took offices, fi you know, fix the budget. It just so happened that the state needed bed space or, or, or a room to house their inmates, and we were fortunate enough to get them. We got that big old shipment coming in, so we got everybody out. Okay, y'all ready to process everyone? Yes, sir. All it's right. to get here. Good, good. All right. Here, prisoners who normally would be scattered across dozens of jails in rural stretches of the state are being brought together in a single facility. It's closer to the communities in and around New Orleans, where most will eventually be released. On top of the $25 per day the Department of Corrections pays the sheriff for each prisoner here, it's paying an additional $1.2 million for rehabilitative programming, including courses on anger management and substance abuse. So we were discussing um, last week about the different effects um, the biological education is key. So the first thing is to get these guys educated. If they do not have a high school diploma or a GED, we make sure that we get them into those classes first. There's also vocational training. It's designed to teach in-demand trades and eventually match former prisoners with jobs on the outside. The first thing you do is unplug your tool. Never work with a plugged-in power tool. Anybody know what this is? Nobody? No? Jigsaw. Jigsaw, yeah. This is a jigsaw. This is We're just really trying to help guys move forward, really change their thought process on how to get work and get money without being illegal with it. Pull up. Noseyaba Okanseri is five years into his sentence for bank fraud and identity theft. During that time, he bounced between eight different local jails before ending up here in Plaquemines Parish. This is the best I've been thus far. As far as like programming, help, one-on-one -on -one with the case managers. Okunseri, who has since been released, says he's grateful he learned skills he can use on the outside. I knew it's hard to get out of jail and instantly find a job. It's thin trading right there because you could go left or you could go right and we're trying to keep them on the right path so I'm trying to hit them with these jobs as soon as possible. Chris Kendrick knows what he's talking about. The chaotic year after Hurricane Katrina he saw his life fall apart. Yeah I hit rock bottom. My mom passed. I lost my house. I was homeless for a few weeks. I fell off and went to jail and that's how I came into this. I saw the trailer, asked a few questions, 
But through my education and my certifications, I was able to get in and get it running. And now I'm just trying to build it to as big as I could get it. Word is now out among inmates throughout the state. Many are asking to be transferred to Plaquemines Correctional Center, where they think they may have a better shot at the future. It's a renowned uh, uh, good reentry program to participate in, not only for the uh, exemplary good programs that are here that actually help you, but also for the good time, because you know, at the end of the day, you know, we all want that good time to go home as soon as possible. We do understand that they have committed a crime. But at some point in time, the judicial system have given them a date to go home. So if we don't afford them the tools and resources that they need, they're going to go back and commit additional crimes. This is permanent public safety. That's what the public needs to understand. These people that come to prison are coming back. And if they want them to come back where they can be on their feet and earn a living and pay taxes and support their family, then they, they need to understand that we need to invest in this system. We have got to fix the system. Secretary LeBlanc's efforts to uh, address the problems in parish prisons um, are welcomed, right? Uh, but it's early still. And this is a large system. And for the folks who are sitting in a small, local uh, parish prison right now who don't have the access to sort of the pilot sites for justice reinvestment, um, I'm not sure how much benefit they're seeing quite yet. Thank you.